Before we begin, let's take a moment to examine the differences between HTML5 and its predecessor, XHTML. In the sample files that were provided for you, you'll find two folders, one called old XHTML and one called HTML5 version 1. Now, we're going to be using both of these purely for the sake of examining what they look like. If you open up the old HTML and just preview it in any browser, you're going to see a very simple sample website here, and it's using older XHTML. We're going to take a second to examine the source files in just a moment. At the same time, you'll also notice here I have just a second the HTML5 version 1. Now if you look at that, there's really no differences between the two in terms of the design. It's just purely one is using green while the other one is using purple, the older one using purple. Now this is an easy way for us to just see them visually, but we're not really looking at them from a visual perspective for this particular video. All I really want to be doing is examining the code information for both of these. Now you could do that in any browser, you could do that in any HTML editor. I just happen to be using Dreamweaver at the moment and as you can see I've got both files open right now. Now like I said you can use any editor to examine these. I'm using Dreamweaver because we have some nice color coding in here as well. You can see things fairly, fairly easily. Now I want to show you the differences. So here is the newer version. This particular version is the HTML5 version and the XHTML version I have right next to it. So if we were to look at the differences between these two, well, anybody here who has had experience creating websites using XHTML but is fairly new to HTML5, you'll notice a few things in particular that do stand out. First and foremost, let's take a look at the very first line. We have our doc type. And as you can see here, the doc type in XHTML was really, really extensive. And most of this information we don't really need. So let's take a look at the difference in our new HTML5 version. Wow, very simple. So as you can see, the simplicity of how the elements are written is one important thing right away. And you'll notice that we also have some other number of changes. I'm really concentrating on simple semantics. So let's look at some at how some of these things are addressed in our version. Well, you'll notice here in the HTML5, X, L, M, and S, HTTP, we don't really need to use that anymore. And as you can see, it's so much cleaner. It's really going to make things a lot easier for you to work with just from a visual perspective, if nothing else. And some other information. Take a look at the meta tag that we have here. There's quite a bit of information in the older version content type and text HTML. Some of this was just used for validation of the XHTML, which we don't really care about in HTML5. It'll validate without it. So all I'm really concerned with in a HTML environment is the char set or the character set of UTF-8. And you'll also notice some other things about the content. For example, it's assumed that we're going to be using text HTML, so we don't even have to address it in our newer version. Let's take a look at the meta tag here. Wow! That is so clean. It's almost as clean as what happened with the doc type. That is just so much more easier to work with. There are some ex you know, exceptions that you could put in here. For example, we could have put in UTF-8 in quotation marks, but it's not necessary. So there's no real need for us to do that as well. There's also some other things that you may recognize as a meta tag is sort of a self-enclosing tag and that's why you know we don't have a close meta tag we just used to use the forward slash at the end of it with the space but let's take a look in HTML5 we don't really need that we're assuming that yes this is a meta tag and it doesn't need to be self-enclosed or enclosed at all we just the browser will just understand that so that makes things remarkably simpler just in the first four lines as you can see when we examine the differences. Now if we look a little bit closer and we sort of examine some elements like working with the semantic sort of 
elements that we have here. Well, div is kind of a neutral semantic or non-semantic, I should say. We don't really know what a div is other than, you know, maybe a division of sorts. And in the past, using XHTML, everyone would use the either ID or classes. And you can see that in this example, uh, there are both classes as well as IDs being used here. And this main div is our container. So we created an ID for it called the container. And we also had a section that was kind of a header. So you'll notice that ID equals header, you know, in quotations, it's there. But, and you may also remember, especially any of you who have looked at some of the earlier killer sites, it's often recommended in the earlier methods to put a little HTML comment in here that said, this ends the header. Why? Because when you have a lot of closing div tags and you don't really know after a while which one belongs to which. So this is a nice little way of you know addressing that. But let's look at how easy things are in HTML5. For example, rather than having to deal with a div with the ID header or a div with the ID nav or a main section for your articles or anything along those lines or a div for that matter with the ID of footer what we do in this instance is just use the much more semantically friendly header tag and header element and notice there's no need for a div id equals it shortens the amount that of code that we're writing but that's not really a big issue here it's just the simplicity of understanding oh well this is the header and this is the closing header there's no need for those html5 uh, or uh, excuse me the html code that we had before in here those comments are removed because i know this is the closing header tag it's forward slash header same thing for the new nav tag, as you can see here, nav, and we now have a close nav. That's great. And notice there are articles. That's right. If you have a main section of information, well, that could be your article. And within there, you could have many headlines and subheadlines, as I do. And you'll also notice that, you know, if I have a special section that I want to sort of highlight inside of it, well, there's even a section element that we have in the new version. Most importantly, you know, the footer tag, footer, footer. You see, in XHTML, there are, we could track the information, and Google has statistics that would have shown how many people are using ID equals footer in their HTML declarations, just as well as, you know, uh, wrapper or container or nav or header. And those are all very popular tags. So rather, or popular IDs and classes. So why not just create an element with that name? It's much easier to understand from a semantic perspective and it also makes things so much easier for us to work with when we're coding, debugging, and doing any number of different things inside of the new HTML5. Now, come back in the next chapter, and what we're going to be dealing with is building a HTML5 website. So we'll address some of these issues again, but we're going to put it in together in a shell that looks a little bit more visually appealing than the one that we just took a look at. So, we'll see you in just a second.